Mic check, test, one, two, mic check.
Mic check, test one, two. Interview level, check one, two, three, mic check. Mic check, test, test one, two, three, mic check. We're joined now by the Denver Pioneers who finished the season with a 25, 10, and 6 record. We're joined by head coach Jim Montgomery, defenseman Will Butcher, and left winger Grant Arnold. We'll take an opening statement from Coach Montgomery, and then we'll take uh, questions for the players, and then take questions for Coach Montgomery after that. Coach, your opening statement. It was a great college hockey game, and it's what we expected. When North Dakota and Denver play, it, it's great hockey, and <clears throat> I'd said yes, or two days ago that uh, the team that's going to win is the team that makes the last play, and North Dakota made the last play. Um, they're, they're a great team, and uh, I wish them luck, and I hope the NCAC brings hope to their first national title. Uh, that being said, I can't be more proud of our group. Uh, I think what you saw from the fight in us all year long and in this game exemplifies the great leadership we have, led by Grant, and the three seniors and Butchie. <coughs> and I think it shows what's, what's inside of us to be able to just keep fighting and to keep believing, no matter what the score was or how we were playing. And I'm very proud to have coached this group. And I know that the numerous um, text messages I've got from the Denver hockey alums, they're very proud of our group and what we've accomplished this year. Thanks a lot, Coach. We'll take questions for the student athletes. Please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation prior to asking your question. We'll start in front, right in, on the right. Mike Chambers with the Denver Post. Seems like you guys were in control in the third period. It was tied 2-2, and then you make that ice, or, or, I'm sorry, that icing. Could you talk about that icing and how, you know, maybe that was not the play right then? Grant, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, um, you know, in between the second and third, we really wanted to just focus on playing pioneer hockey. And, I mean, man, we came out and we played hard. We played pioneer hockey for about 19 minutes there. Um, and, you know, it's a tough play. It's a high sh it's a high intensity situation. And, you know, you want to get the puck out. So, you know, I can't blame um, the player that did that. There's no question about it. We had a face off and in our zone. And, you know, that's hockey. North Dakota is a great team. You know, they want to battle and they, and they put the puck in the net. But I mean, like Monty said, I mean, we came out and we played so hard in that third period. And I mean, I'm just extremely proud of my teammates, um, the fight and the heart they showed in the third. There's no question about it. It was, uh, it was a pleasure to lead this team for sure. We'll take one in the second row on the right and then one in front. Jess Myers, USA Hockey <coughs> Magazine. Will, it seemed like the offense started with you guys on the blue line tonight with, you know, with two defensemen scoring for you. What, what did that say about you know, the kind of the fight that you had despite being down 2 nothing in the third? Yeah, um, I, I would say a lot of it came from mostly our forwards, honestly, creating space for us up top. I think that face-off play we ran, Grant had great face-off intensity right off the bat and just bumped the puck back to me, and all I had to do was just put the puck in the open area, which I did. And uh, Van Voorst made a great rush on, on uh, uh, towards the offensive no zone, and he just turned around and tried to throw one to an open guy and just went off a stick, and he got a little bit of puck luck. So um, I think our forwards did a lot more than uh, what I think they were giving credit for tonight. One in front, Candace. Uh, this is for Will. Candace Horgan, U.S. College Hockey Online. Um, your power play, I think, went 0 for 24 against North Dakota. 
on the season. So can you talk about what they were able to do to shut you down, especially in the third period? You had that late power play opportunity with the game tied 2-2, and it seemed like you struggled there. Yeah, I think that was our worst power play of the night, to be honest with you. Um, I made a crappy pass up over to Trevor and just didn't seem like it was cooking too much. But um, they do a pretty good job of clogging the middle, um, and it's hard to get shots through on them. And um, they know what kind of what we want to do is drag and flank. And, um, it's hard for our flankers sometimes to make the open reads or make the open shots, but I thought our power play did a great job at the beginning of the game, get, building some momentum for us and creating some opportunities. We just weren't getting the bounces. Take another one in front, Mike. Mike Chambers with Denver Post. Uh, I think I have an idea of why you guys still have your jerseys on, but could you just talk about why? Yeah, um, I mean, this is the last time I'm going to be able to wear this jersey. Um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Um, you know, two sur two surgeries on my body. Um, a lot of great wins. A lot of great friendships. Um, you know, Denver hockey's a family. Denver athletics is a family. And you know, I'm just keeping it on as long as I can and just enjoying it. You know, maybe get a couple more pictures in it with my face in the media. At my yep, that'll probably be the last of that. But um, you know, yeah, I just wanna I just wanna show the show the pride I have for Denver hockey and Denver athletics. And I mean, um, it's, like I said, it's a family. I know North Dakota is going to represent them well in the national championship game. So, um, like I said, just I love I love Denver athletics. I love Denver hockey. Uh, Coach Montgomery, I've learned more than you could ever imagine from him, and you know we'll be lifelong friends. And uh, that's what that's what Denver hockey is. Denver athletics is it's a family, and you know we love each other. And I just want to want to keep it on for a little bit longer. Will anything to add? Uh, just to go off with Grant said, I mean the organization we play for is top notch. It's the best I think, and that. I, it's an honor to put on this sweater every time I wear it, and it's hard to take it off, so that's why I got it on still. Take another one in front, Candace. Candace Horgan, U.S. College Hockey Online. This is for either Grant or Will. Um, you guys have demonstrated a lot of resiliency during the course of the season coming back from setbacks. So talk about how that might have informed your attitude going into the third period down 2-0 and, and having struggled to get any momentum going in against North Dakota in this game. Will, why don't you start, and then we'll get Grant. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just our mentality and how we play. I mean, coach runs tough practices all the year, and it just helps us out. I mean, we're on the bench kind of laughing, and Van Voorst is saying this is why we do laps all the time for at the end of practice. So, I mean, that's just how we are and just how we're built to play at uh, Denver. So, Grant? Yeah, I mean, we're never going to give up no matter what the score is. Um, you know, it could have been 5-0 going into the third. We would have we came out and we could have caught fire and run, but um, that's just Denver hockey. That's how Molly coaches. And that's how he recruits. I mean, we, we recruit great kids. Um, you can see it with our freshman class this year, how much they've grown, how much they've grown um, since the beginning of the season. I mean, they've been awesome. So, I mean, we, we recruit great kids here with a lot of heart, and they're never going to give up. I mean, we're going to fight till the end. And um, that was just that was just Denver hockey. That was not a surprise to us that we came back from 2-0. I mean, we were we were living in the moment and you know giving it everything we had. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we'll take questions for Coach Montgomery. We'll start with Jess Myers in the second row on the right. Jess Myers, USA Hockey Magazine. Jim, on the last North Dakota penalty, were you asking for a major penalty there? No, I was just asking for clarification. Like, um, my assistant coach, Tavis McMillan, had said it was a high hit. And I, I just asked, I said, don't you have to review every high hit? And um, they said, yes, we're going to do that. And, they did it, and they said that it, the initial point of contact uh, was, I guess, the shoulder, and then it went up. So uh, I thought the referee crew did a fantastic job tonight. I thought, you know, there was uh, some some situations where it looked like there was a penalty, and I thought both ways they made the right non-call. So they, they let the teams play, and you know what? North, like I said, North Dakota made the last play. They won the game. Okay. Take one in front for Candace. Candace Horgan, yes, College Hockey Online. Uh, Monty, I, I asked Will about the power play earlier, but I'd like to get your perspective on it. You know, why was North Dakota able to shut you guys down so effectively? I mean, you had two or three chances in the first period and then the one late in the third as well. Oh, well, I think the big thing is uh, they won face-offs. And then the second thing, anytime there's a scrum, they came up with it. Um, 
they're a really good penalty kill team, and um, we had opportunities. Uh, the one thing we didn't do is we wanted to try and go to the goal line, and uh, we never did that. And we shot in the shin pads a little too much. We need to show a little more poise in those situations. But I give full credit to North Dakota's penalty kill. I mean, they work as for it's not easy to penetrate their blue line. It's not easy to get open sticks at the net. They're really good, and you know I, I wish we would have made a couple more plays, but we didn't. You got to give credit to them. Take one on the second row on the right. David Herman, Mile High Sports. Um, seems like you guys failed to establish really a net front presence during the course of this game. Uh, could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, the toughest thing against North Dakota to, to score against them, and you saw it early in the game, we didn't have a lot of shots. It's because they, they give you the outside and they take it away really well. And if you don't have a middle lane drive presence, it's hard to back them off. We started to create, I thought, in the last seven minutes of the second and the first 15 of the third. I started, we started to create a middle lane drive, and I think you could see Johnson because any, normal, any goalie will back into their net if you have a middle lane a drive presence, and I think that's why Van Vora scored from where he scored from. Okay. Up front, Mike. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Any thoughts about the icing? Obviously, you're not going to pile on the player who did it, but uh, obviously he had time and space there, and it was a, it was a big play in the game. Yeah, um, you know, I, uh, you know I, Mike, I'm not with you on that one. I mean, I thought that he was trying to go off the glass, and our weak side wing, part of our breakouts, we don't have a play, and he was starting to get squeezed off is to go off the glass, and our weak side wing's got to go pursue. Our weak side wing was tired, so he didn't, he didn't negate the icing. And we called timeout, and then, um, you know, we had three seniors on the ice, and we got out-muscled at the net front. I, the CBS line scored all three goals. You got to tip, tip your hat to them. Okay. Another question on the right. David Herman, my Ohio Sports. Um, seems like you guys were giving up a lot of on-man breaks today, which was uncharacteristic for a Denver team. Uh, could you talk about that as well? Yeah, I think, geez, I said in, uh, after the first period, I said to our staff, I said, I think both teams had more odd man rushes than they did shots on net. And it's surprising with the skill level that there wasn't more goals because of it. Um, but uh, you know what? We, we had odd man rushes and we had looks, and we didn't make clean plays. And because of that, you know, our defensemen, are we tell them to jump, and they're jumping. And as the North Dakota had good sticks. They deflected, and they got two-on-one or three-on-one the other way. Um, that's where we need to make cleaner plays. And I thought in the first period, I thought we had the momentum of the game, especially early. And I didn't think that's where we need to capitalize, and we need to go up. Okay. Additional questions for Coach Montgomery? All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. Yeah, thank you. All right, we are joined by the victorious North Dakota Fighting Hawks. We have head coach Brad Berry, forward Drake Kajula, center Colton Sanderson, and center Nick Schmaltz. We'll take uh, an opening statement from Coach Berry, and then we'll have questions for the players. Coach. Uh, just want to say, first of all, I want to congratulate Jim Montgomery and his Denver Pioneer team. Uh, we've battled them all year, and that's what you see, a, a very good team, very well-coached, structured, hardworking team, and uh, they left it all on the ice. and. Uh, that's a typical NCHC uh, rival game. Okay. 
Questions for the student athletes, just a reminder, name and affiliation prior to the question. We'll start in the back right. Jeff Jensen, WFTV. Guys, talk about the home ice advantage you guys had. It felt like being in Grand Forks again, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, our fans are the, are the greatest in the world. They travel anywhere we go and, um, you know, there's, but you go back to our campus, the students are probably going crazy. Even the faculty is probably going crazy as well. But our fans travel everywhere with us and they support us everywhere we go, no matter what happens. And, uh, you know, we love them just as much as they love us. And I know it's a special relationship, that's for sure. And it's uh, certainly a lot easier playing in an atmosphere where it's uh, pretty much a home ice advantage for you everywhere you go. That's for sure. Thanks, Drake. Anything to add on that, Colton? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, we're pretty privileged to get to play at the program that we do, and with that comes uh, those fans and that support that we get, and uh, I think there's a slogan that goes around that every game is a home game, and it was definitely true tonight, and we uh, we appreciate their support. Uh, we were happy to get this done and get rid of the ghosts a little bit, but we got a job to do Saturday, and we know that they're going to be cheering us on. Okay, let's take one out on the right. Jess Myers, USA Hockey Magazine. Drake, take us through your second goal, if you could. Um, did you see that pass that was going to happen or what what led to the the turnover and then what did you do uh well first it started with a good offensive change by i think it was rec gardner he came off the ice early and uh i kind of came off the bench and i was hiding behind some of the players in the new uh the high slot there and was able to pick a pocket of a denver player and uh, just made a quick move around a guy and tried to get it on the net as quick as possible and i think it went under his glove so uh yeah i just tried to hide behind a couple of the defenders there and, and uh pick his pocket and that's all okay. take one in the middle candace Candace Horgan, U.S. College Hockey Online. This is for any of you guys. Uh, you held Denver without a power play goal and 24 chances all year long, and uh, you came up big again with the game tied 2-2 in the third period uh, with the six minutes left. So talk about your ability to shut down, especially their top line, but their entire power play. Nick, why don't you start? Um, yeah, uh, obviously special teams are huge this time of year, and uh, we gave them uh, four opportunities tonight and I uh, thought our guys battled up when uh, we went a, sh a man down. And uh, you got to do that this time of year. We had guys blocking shots all over the place. And, uh, yeah, we're just a team first team that does whatever uh, whatever it takes to kill those penalties off and then get back to work right after. Drake? Yeah, uh, I think Nick hit it right on the right on the head there. It's, uh, you know, if we take pride in our special teams, we definitely take pride in our penalty kill. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a huge part of our game. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, we had a penalty kill there late in third, and we were able to kill it off. And, uh, you know, you can get a lot of momentum from a penalty kill like that. And, uh, you know, we had guys sacrifice, and I think Tucker Pullman blocked about six penalties or six shots tonight. So uh, just guys like that laying their bodies on the line, and, and uh, you know, it's a team first mentality, that's for sure. Additional questions for the student athletes. We'll take one in the middle. Uh, Courtney Martinez, NCAA.com. Uh, Colton or Drake, uh, with the way that the Frozen Four has ended for you guys the past couple of seasons, what does it mean to finally break through and get a chance uh, for a title in your final your final season? Colton. Yeah, it means a lot to us. Uh, it was kind of a big thing that we talked about within our room, uh, the guys coming back and talking about the last two years and kind of the heartbreak of uh, losing that semifinal game. And we didn't want to have to go through that again uh, in that locker room. Uh, guys battled up tonight. Maybe it wasn't our best performance, but there was never any doubt in our minds that we were going to keep battling, keep fighting, and clawing to try and get to Saturday night. And we did that, and uh, we'll enjoy it tonight and move on tomorrow and get ready for Quinnipiac. Drake, from a senior point of view as well? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when you first step up uh, on University of North Dakota campus, the first thing you talk about is winning a national championship. And uh, for the first three years, we came up short. And uh, as a senior class, we wanted to leave this, uh, leave this program with a national championship. And uh, you know, we're one step closer there. Uh, we're going to get ready tomorrow um, and get ready for Saturday and, and hopefully win that national championship that we've been working for four years for. Take one on the right. Ted LaRue, KVRR TV. Now, considering, you know, what kind of a opponent Denver is and the circumstances, you know, going ahead 2 nothing, them coming back, do you feel you're even more confident going into that game against Quinnipiac tomorrow saying, hey, we can come back from anything? Nick, uh, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I thought uh, – I thought we got away from our game a little bit uh, early in the third period there. And uh, when you do that against a good team, they're going to make you pay. And uh, Denver did that to us. But uh, I thought we regrouped uh, pretty well. Uh, we knew that uh, we had it in our bench. Uh, everyone was staying positive. Everyone was confident in our team. Uh, and uh, we knew that we'd be fine. And we went out there and uh, made a play and uh, won the game. So uh, we, yeah, we're really confident going into uh, Saturday. And it'll be a really good matchup against a good team. Additional questions for the student athletes? Okay, we'll take one more on the right. Uh, 
Mick Hatton from the St. Cloud Times. Uh, Drake and Nick, uh, you know, Brock Besser set up a, a couple of goals tonight. Uh, just uh, talk a little bit about his contributions uh, to your line and uh, what he's kind of meant to you guys this season. Drake, why don't you go first? Well, we always joke around and tell him to pass the puck because all he does is score. But, um, <laughs> no, he uh, – a lot of people don't realize just how good his vision is, and, and he can make plays all over the ice, not just scoring goals, but he can definitely find you in open areas. And <clears throat> he, uh, he made a great play to me on my first goal, uh, an awesome saucer pass behind the defenseman. And, um, you know, he made a great play to Nick on the third one there. So uh, he's, been, it's, he's been huge for our line. He's, he's a freshman, but he doesn't act like a freshman. He's a very mature kid uh, on and off the ice, and I think that's what makes him uh, you know, such a special person and such a special player as well. Nick? Yeah, just going off of that, uh, it's, uh, he's a fun player to play with. Um, he thinks the game the same way as uh, me and Drake. On the, uh, we like to make plays, uh, but we also like to play hard away from the puck, and I think uh, that's the staple of our, our success is uh, how hard we play away from the puck and getting the pucks back and then going uh, and playing offense. So uh, he's been a huge piece uh, to our line, and uh, hopefully we can keep her rolling on Saturday. Okay. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, we're ready for questions for Coach Barry. We'll start in front with Jess and then Candace. Jess Myers, USA Hockey Magazine. Two goal lead is called the worst lead in hockey. You know, you're up, you're up by that after 40 minutes. Do you caution that a storm is coming, or how do you how do you play that in the locker room? No, our message after the second period was keep the foot on the gas. Uh, the only problem was we stopped uh, making plays for a little bit, and uh, you know I, I, I thought we started the game a little bit slow, uh, a little tentative, and then in the second period, uh, I, I think the last two shifts of the first period, we picked up momentum, played in their end of the rink, and then in the second period, we got back to making plays, playing with confidence, moving the puck north. And uh, being two goals up, you're playing against a very good team. They're going to make plays. Uh, obviously, the first goal on a face-off play, they, they made a nice play to score. But again, uh, if you stop making plays, that's what happens. And, and again, it's a learning lesson for us tonight going forward that you got to keep the foot on the gas and keep playing and making plays. Candace. Candace Horgan, U.S. College Hockey Online. Uh, Brad, I asked the players earlier about the success of the penalty kill. So can you talk about how you've been able to shut Denver's power play down all season long? And then also, did you drop anything specific for the big one with six minutes left in the third? Well, I think the first thing is, you know, everybody buying into the to the system, you know, and that's five on five power play penalty kill. And again, tonight, the penalty kill did a great job. It won us the game. Uh, you know, I think it's a shot blocking mentality that we had. I think we had 27 blocks tonight. Tucker Pullman led the way with that. But everybody willing to get in front of a shot. The other part of that is Dane Jackson runs our penalty kill. I can't give him enough credit as far as what he's done uh, with the penalty kill this year. It's outstanding. Attention to detail. Uh, you know, that's what you have to do to win games. Your structure has to be very good. We had three smart players right sitting right beside me here. They're, they're all about detail, and, uh, and they, they, they made it to a tee tonight. Okay, Paul, we'll take one in front, and then we'll go. In the, oh, we got actually one in the back first. The Mike left. McCann with KBRR. Coach, appreciate the segue into the block shots there. I know you're proud of your team when they score goals. You're proud of them when they kill penalties. But when you see it, the number, that many block shots, how does that feeling of pride compare to everything else? Well, I, I love it because that's the kind of player I was. I wasn't very skilled, and uh, and uh, so it's kind of touching to my heart that seeing a guy get in front of a shot but you know you see that see the guys that do it every day but sometimes when uh, when when the guys that aren't apt to do it are doing it that means it's contagious and guys are buying in and doing the right thing so um just proud of the guys the way to find way they found a way to win tonight and again uh, you know what there was no panic on the bench the guys you know even though the game was going the wrong way the first 10 minutes of the third period they caught their breath after a timeout and they said we got this so again it's, it goes to the leadership in the locker room and uh and and it's their room right now paula paula weston u.s college hockey online yesterday you talked about the blue collar ethic that this team has and your players though talked about sort of the amalgamation of the younger players and and the experienced players as well how indicative of that or how representative of that is that top line like uh, how how much they represent the whole team the youth and the leadership well you know like obviously that top line gets a lot of accolades and uh uh you know it's well deserved you know they they played well the whole year offensively but i think you just heard nick schmaltz say sometimes you know offensive players like to play with the puck and not so much without it you know he made an, uh, a note there that you know what we're a 200 foot team and we do it too and, and again that's a big deal for our team as far as the young guys getting immersed in our group that goes to our culture at north dakota as far as you know not 
having the, the freshmen in one area and the seniors in another area. It's about embracing them right away when they get on campus. That's a big deal. You have no time to, to try to immerse the group. You have to make sure that they are embraced right away, and that's what our leaders do. On the left. Phil Newman, WDAZ. Coach, uh, Luke Johnson's been a big part of your, your heavy line there. What's kind of his status, and what, what has he meant to that line so far this season? Well, uh, he's meant a lot. And, and again, uh, he, he plays consistent every, every single game that he plays. But it seems like this time of year, he, he really plays well. And, and you know, he, I think he likes the high pressure, pressure situations. He, he, he's a gamer. You know, it was unfortunate tonight that he went out early in the game and couldn't couldn't return and that you know threw a wrench into us you know we wanted that matchup tonight we wanted we call it the heavy line we wanted a heavy line against uh, Gambrell's line and and they did a great job but in saying that you know what it goes back to the 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 next man up mentality that we always keep talking about uh, uh, Colton Sanderson had to come in and play left wing we put Rhett Gardner in the middle interchangeable parts but everybody's buying in and, and found a way to get it done so again like I said uh, it was it was it was a great mentality tonight and found a way to get it done Additional questions for Coach Berry. Okay, Bob, and then we'll take one in the back right. Brad, Bob, NHL.com and BruinsDaily.com. I know you're going to downplay this, but in 2005, David Haxtall had the chance of being the first coach, rookie coach, first year coach to win a national championship, and he you are with the chance to do that. Maybe a comment about that. Well, first of all, uh, going towards Dave Haxtell, he did a tremendous job for our program here. He's, he's one of a number of coaches that added to the tradition of our, our program here. And, uh, you know, there's a bar of excellence, and he, he got to that every year. You know, we're fortunate enough this year to move forward because of a guy like him and also a guy like Gino Gasparini that's with us on the trip here that's won three national championships. You know, what we're trying to do right now is to try to do what they have did in the past here. We're fortunate enough to move on here. Our guys played well, fortunate enough to move on. And uh, we said it early in the year in August, like, we have goals in front of us. And uh, we want to check off all the boxes. Well, our last check box was to play in the last game on April uh, 9th here in Tampa Bay, and we want to check that box off with a win. In the back. John Ludy, WFTV. Uh, Coach, can you just uh, run through just before the, uh, the, the big goal at the end? What did you uh, say to the team? And was that play exactly run exactly the way you want it, or uh, – was it kind of just a matter of them going to the net and making the play? Well, first of all, I, I give credit to the players. They made the play. Uh, you know, big-time players make big-time plays, and that's what they did. You know, they executed on the play we drew up. You know, in, in practice during a week, once or twice a week, we work on face-off plays, offensive and defensive. And that, that was a high blast play where we come off the wall. A lot of teams do that play. Come off the ball, you win the draw and get a puck to the net. And, you know, to, for example, uh, uh, Brock Besser took the draw for uh, Nick Schmaltz. Uh, Brock's a strong body. He won it back. Drake uh, kind of whiffed on the puck a little bit, but Brock uh, got the puck back again and made a great play to uh, uh, Nick on the back door. But again, it's, it's, it's guys executing and attention to detail of what we do every day in practice. And, and again, it reaped the rewards tonight because they're, they were dialed in. Okay, we'll take one in the front right. David Herman, Mile High Sports. Um, you really kept that Pacific Rim line in check tonight. Can you talk a little bit about the game plan, line matchups, uh, how you handled that? Well, I, I really didn't want to. I know Jim Montgomery liked to talk about it earlier. He tried to bait me in on trying to make a couple of switches there. and uh, But again, uh, we stuck with our game plan. You know, uh, We put the heavy line against them, which was uh, Pagansk, Pagansky, Johnson, and Gardner. Uh, and obviously Sanderson had to come in and, 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 and do that. But we found some success over the last three or four weeks by putting that line together, playing against heavy lines like the Stevens line in the Northeastern, like the Mott line in, uh, in Michigan. They did an unbelievable job of keeping teams at bay on their big lines. They did it to perfection tonight again. And uh, again, it's, uh, it's, it's part of a group. You have to have a lot of, little bit of different things in your group going forward. And uh, you know you got the CBS line, but you have to have other guys doing their roles, and the guys did their roles tonight. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations.